On some more tax cheat codes of how you can build wealth as a business owner, there's a little known strategy called investment bonds, a strategy that I've been using for many years and uh, great financial advisors also leverage this strategy. It's an amazing way for you to build wealth and ultimately have no capital gains tax if you hold the investment for more than 10 years. So let me give you a crash course. So investment bonds, or what's also known as insurance bonds, have been around for a very long time. We're talking hundreds of years. Very popular in war times as a savings vehicle, and these days, uh, very little used, honestly. Uh, most people don't understand how they work. There are a few com complications that you need to wrap your head around, um, but once you understand them, you'll understand the power of this particular strategy. Now, an investment bond is basically a tax structure. Because it is uh, deemed as an insurance product, it has an internal rate of tax internally, which is 30%. Now, that tax is paid internally within the bond. So any earnings that it produces, it pays 30% tax on those earnings, which I'll explain in a little bit more detail shortly. And basically none of those earnings need to be declared by you. Now, the second big benefit is that if you hold the investment bond for more than 10 years, it becomes capital gains tax free. So if you have any accumulated or accrued unrealized capital gains, if you sell down that bond uh, after 10 years, um, uh, or you continue to run it, any contributions from 10 years onwards and all of the appreciation along the way are capital gains tax free, which is really, really cool. Compared to, let's say for example, you had bought a share portfolio that you'd accumulated over the course of say 10 years, and if you sold down that share portfolio, um, assuming that you're on top marginal tax rate, you get a 50% CGT discount, you'd be up to 25% tax or thereabouts uh, on any of the gains that you'd made. In an investment bond, it would be zero. Now, there's a really important kind of considerations as part of this strategy. So consideration number one is that uh, you need to understand the taxation on this particular investment and the difference between income and capital gains. Now, in many managed funds, particularly actively managed funds, the fund manager turns over the portfolio by anywhere between 70 and 130% on average in that portfolio per annum. So what that basically means is that as an individual, um, if you are uh, buying an actively managed fund um, and that portfolio is being turned over, all of the gains that they may or may not be producing on a particular year are going to be realized in that particular year, uh, as opposed to accru accruing uh, capital gains and uh, not selling down, making them unrealized. This is the reason why uh, we're big believers in index funds. Uh, index funds in their function do not uh, realize gains. Uh, they typically accumulate unrealized gains over a long period of time because they don't turn over the portfolio. Um, and for that reason, it is a very tax efficient way. And for many of our clients who use uh, investment bonds and use index funds, their taxation can in some cases be equivalent and in sometimes better than superannuation, uh, which is taxed between 10 and 15%. Now, the second consideration is the contributions that you can make into an investment bond. So because of the lucrative benefits of the tax system, the government doesn't want people abusing these rules. So they've implemented a, a minimum uh, or maximum amount that you can put in each year of 125% of what you've put in the previous year. So to keep my numbers simple, let's assume that you put in $1,000 year one, you could put in 1,250 year two. And then let's say in year three, you put zero. In year four, you can put zero because 125% of zero is zero. So the important part of this strategy is to ensure that when you're setting up your investment bond, you set the precedent of contributions in year one. Um, we've got a calculator that we work through with our clients that say, okay, this is what you want that to be used for. So for example, um, many of our clients use it for kids' education funding uh, or creating a nest egg for their kids. Um, some people use it as an alternative to superannuation because they've met all of the contribution caps. Um, some other individuals just want to use it as a wealth creation vehicle uh, to supplement their business and their property portfolio. Now, whatever the particular reason is, um, we need to understand what are we actually trying to achieve so we can make sure that we can work with a 125% rule. Now, the good news is, if for whatever reason, let's say that your business is immensely profitable and uh, you want to contribute more than the 125% rule, we don't want to contribute it to the existing bond because that would actually reset the 10-year rule. 
let's say you're seven years in, you're going to lose all of that seven years and have to start again from scratch. So what we typically do is just set up a new one. Uh, set up a new one with a new set of bonds and a new amount of contribution. Of course, that's going to have 10 years from the start of that particular bond, uh, but we keep the original one intact. And so it's a little bit of a cheeky strategy. Now, the good thing is that if you think about 25% compounding on your contributions each year, that's an incredible amount of growth. Um, that you have on those contributions each year. For many of our clients, they might only increase their monthly contributions each uh, anniversary of the bond by about 10 or 15%. Even that grows very, very quickly. Um, so it's a, it's a great way for you to maintain this particular strategy. Now, the other little, uh, little known trick of this particular uh, strategy is that an investment bond, you have the ability to transfer ownership of that investment bond without triggering capital gains tax or without resetting the 10-year rule. So what's the benefits of this? Well, one, we could use it as an estate planning tool. God forbid something happens to you. We define a beneficiary, let's say one of your kids. Your kids could inherit the investment bond and they could maintain all of the tax treatment and uh, the, the tenure of that particular bond. So let's say you'd run it for 15 years. They can continue contributing to that bond. All of those investments are capital gains tax-free. You can use that as a, a way for you to transfer it to your kids' names once they get to a point where they're responsible. So we can build it up throughout their lifetime, potentially draw a little bit of the funds in order to fund education and maybe help them start a business. And then we can basically transfer that investment bond to them. Once again, they can continue to contribute, maintaining the 10-year rule and uh, maintaining the contributions without resetting of the tax consequences. So this is a fantastic way for you to implement tax planning and generational wealth for your family. So if you're interested in finding out more about investment bonds, I've got an ebook that covers all of the frameworks, um, this particular strategy, and a whole heap of other strategies that we use with our clients to help them maximize their profit and build more personal wealth. Uh, if you wanna grab a copy, jump in my bio. There's a link there, Wealth Health Check. Uh, if you jump on there, you'll get all of the resources for free.